Okay, today we are gonna to talk about when it is too late to get an epidural. So many people are worried about this. Let's talk about it. I'm Hillary. I am the pregnancy nurse and I have 20 years of labor and delivery experience. I am also the curly head behind the website Pulling Curls where we aim to prepare you from bump to bassinet for the confident collaborative hospital birth that you are looking for. I am also the creator of the online prenatal class for couples where we have a whole chapter about pain management options. We talk all about this so be sure to join me in there but today we are just going to talk about when it is too late to get your epidural. When? is too late to get your epidural really depends on three different things. The first one is you and your pregnancy. A lot of times if it's your second pregnancy, that really varies than if it's your first pregnancy. Now my first time moms out there, this really isn't a question you need to worry about too much, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about why. The second thing is your hospital and their anesthesia staffing. Some hospitals have anesthesia on the unit all day, every day, forever and ever. And some hospitals, that anesthesiologist, if no one has an epidural in, can go home and they have to be back within a certain time period. So if that's the case at your hospital, you might wanna request it a little bit earlier, just so you have some buffer for that anesthesiologist to get back to the hospital. The third thing is the willingness of your team. I have seen some labor nurses who once you're past nine centimeters are just like, just go for it, honey. Um, and some labor nurses say, okay, let's try and get it. I was always the let's try and get it camp. I'm not sure that it ended up being helpful. We'll talk a little bit more about why coming up. Okay, so what would make it too late, right? I mean, because they always want your money, anesthesia does, so what would make it too late? First thing is, you have to be able to sit still during the epidural placement. And a lot of times, once you get to that transition period, you really wanna move, you're moving all the time, it's very difficult to sit still if you don't have an epidural already infusing, and so uh, they need you to be able to sit still for the placement. Now, the actual placement of the epidural does not take that long. There is a lot of prep. Um, and if you want to learn about that, go ahead and see my last epidural video where I put it in in Raggedy Ann and you can see exactly how that works. But essentially the only time that you really have to sit still is during the actual placement. During the numbing as well, but that is very quick um, and then you can move around a little bit as you need to. So if you are worried about moving too much, talk with your anesthesiologist ahead of time so that you know um, what's okay and what's not okay. Second of all, most people sit up for an epidural placement. Some doctors still have you lay down but most people are sitting up for their epidural placement and if the baby's head is coming out obviously you can't be sitting up so that's one of the things that prevents you from getting an epidural at that point but in addition to that it would be too late the epidural still takes about 20 minutes to set up and I find that people who are in an enormous amount of pain sometimes it just doesn't catch all the way up so if the baby were to be coming out while you're sitting up, it really doesn't make sense to put in the epidural right then. It won't have time to take effect before the baby comes out. And a lot of times if you are so going so fast or things are happening quickly, it may not be your smartest move. That is why some of the moms that I got an epidural, they would be really disappointed in the end because they had taken the effort to sit still for the epidural, but then it didn't really have time to take effect before the baby came out. So I never really knew if they were very happy that they got the epidural or if they were, they wish they had just stuck it out and had the baby instead of the bill from the epidural, um, the pain of having to sit still for the epidural, and also, you know, after the baby came out, then they were numb, it was difficult to get up to the restroom and things like that. So that's something to think about. I leave that up to my patients though. If you were requesting an epidural, I will try and get you one unless the head's coming out. Anesthesia probably wouldn't give you an epidural at that point. They do not deliver babies in any shape or form. So in general, what is the rule that we all follow? If it's your first baby, and unless the head is crowning where we can see the head of the baby, I will give you an epidural. Um, it allows you to relax, maybe have some time to rest before you push the baby out. You just have a long time because you're stretching out that birth canal tissue. If it's your second baby, nine centimeters is really the time where I go, are you sure? Um, because a lot of times that nine centimeter, if it's your second baby, it quickly melts away. We push, pushing actually, it's hard to imagine, but it actually feels better when you're pushing against the contractions. And so I get moms, you know, pretty comfortable pushing against the contractions, having the baby fairly quickly, and then going on. Now, of course, this depends. My second baby was actually a pound bigger than my first baby, and so it actually took a while to push him out. So if I noticed that things like that were happening, maybe I could slide you into an epidural 
um, in that case. Also, depending on how the baby's looking and all these different kinds of things, things you're experiencing, if you had high blood pressure, things like that, they're all coming into play for this epidural. So just something to consider as you think about getting an epidural at your delivery. And I think you're gonna like some of these upcoming videos as well.